a wonderful summer treat in the square foot garden is the cucumber and I would love to share with you how you can grow cucumbers in your square foot garden too. I'll give you different tips and tricks along the way so that you will have a successful cucumber harvest this summer. First you'll want to pick out what kind you want to grow. You can grow a pickling type as you see here and then this is what you would call an English or Asian cucumber. They are the long slender varieties um, that are almost seedless and those are absolutely wonderful too. This is referred to as a slicing cucumber but another type of slicing cucumber only grows to around eight inches long and that would be more similar to this one here. This is a market more cucumber. So once you've decided which kind you want to grow, next you'll want to make sure that it is a vining variety and not a bush type. For the square foot garden we like to grow these vertically most of the time and so that's why you need to make sure it's a vining type but most cucumbers are. I also recommend purchasing seeds which are disease resistant. Cucumbers often will succumb to different types of diseases and this will affect your harvest. And if you're new to gardening, you may not know what are disease resistant varieties. Here is an example of a seed company's website and I can easily navigate through there. And they have disease resistant codes right there on their website. Um, some of the ones for cucumbers, um, one would be downy mildew, there's powdery mildew. These are things that will really affect your cucumber uh, harvest. So uh, when you go down through the vegetables here, and that will tell you um, what it is resistant to. Now resistant doesn't mean it will not eventually succumb to the disease, but it will make it a lot easier to grow because these, most of these have been bred to be resistant to a certain disease with the exception of market more and that one is uh, just a nice heirloom variety and it has a lot of disease resistance and plus you can save the seeds to replant the following year so that's a really good cucumber for those of you who are new to um, gardening and then the next thing you'll need to do after you've selected your seed is check your frost date. You want to plant your cucumbers about one week after your last spring frost date. And you can find that um, a lot of different ways online. I'll leave a link below the video if you'd like to check that out. You also can go to this website here where you can find out your zone that you live in in case you don't know what zone you live in. Okay, so we can start by actually direct sowing the seeds into our soil and I like to loosen up my soil real good first and because I don't use my grid, which is what you really should be using when you first start using the square foot garden method, I just use a couple of skewers to measure off my square foot. But since these are 12 inches long, always when we're planting something new in a square, you want to be building the soil with some rich compost. So add about a cup of rich compost to your square. Make sure that your soil is nice and loose. And now I have also been pre-soaking my seeds. You want to do this because it'll just make them a little bit easier to germinate. And we can plant two per square foot. So I like to plant them in the corners and you want to plant them just about two to three times the width of the seed. Now I don't want to get too confusing here, but a lot of times I've read that cucumber seeds are sensitive to the way they are planted. But from my experience, I have not found that to be the case. So in other words, I've read before that you should plant the cucumbers radical end up so that's the side of the seed which is pointed and it was attached to the parent fruit now like I said I don't want to make this too confusing but in case you read that you should actually plant these up or down I've seen on the internet they say plant that down and I've read in books plant that side up I have really never paid attention to that and I've not had a problem so if you start hearing things about planting the radical end up or down you can certainly do your own experiment and see if it affects the seeds that you're growing but, but from my experience it's really never made much of a difference and I've grown a lot of cucumbers in my time and I've never bought a plant already germinated I've grown all of mine from seed and the reason why you really don't have to be concerned in my opinion which side you plant down or up. All seeds are geotropic, which means basically when that seed starts to germinate, the root growth will grow towards the 
pull of gravity okay so that's all that means and that's what seeds will just naturally orient themselves to grow with the root towards gravity and the sprout away from gravity which is called negative geotropism and then the root will grow positive geotropism so back to the garden water them in real well and you want to keep these watered until they germinate and we'll talk about the germination temperature here in just a minute give them a marker so you don't go back and plant something else over them and they'll also need something to grow up and I like to use these little trellises here of course you can always make your own trellis and the directions for that are in your square foot garden book it's just an easy DIY project so certainly check that out I also have a problem with little critters in my garden so a lot of times early in the season I'll protect my beds with some bird netting just right over there over the top and I secure it with a little skewer and this is what it looks like when it starts to get its true leaves okay now another way you can do this is to start them in cups I like to use plastic cups and you can just Put you some holes in your cup it's a lot harder to use a drill i like to use this little iron here and just um, put some holes down the bottom and i also like to put them um, around the side i think i got this at harbor freight for just a few dollars you can get them on amazon prime also and so i will put some seed starting mix in here which i make myself and then i put the cup in another cup which does not have holes in it with a couple of rocks just to act as a little spacer because we don't want our soil just sitting in water and then I put two seeds per cup and that is just so I will ensure germination and again you don't want to plant them too deep just about two to three times the width of the seed and we'll water those in really good here that water will drain out the bottom and into the other cup I'll give them a marker so I know which kind I'm growing and then put a couple of lids on here if you don't have lids you can just use a little bit of cling wrap with a rubber band you want to put these somewhere pretty warm at least around 70 degrees Fahrenheit and it'll take about four to eight days for them to sprout sometimes I'll put these in a warm windowsill or on a warming mat they'll germinate even faster if it's warmer than 70 degrees Fahrenheit and once they are up you can gradually start to move these outdoors maybe just a couple of hours each day in the shaded area thin out the cup I want just one cucumber per cup cucumbers have a very sensitive root system and so we don't want them to get very big before we move them into the square foot garden and so this is about one week after my last frost date loosened up the soil and we'll mark off our square foot so this is about 17 days after I started them in cups now I'm going to add a little bit more males mix to my soil just to make sure to keep it nice and fluffy you'll just have to gauge your own soil and see if you might need to add a little bit more males mix we want that vermiculite to be nice and fluffy in the soil so for that reason I'm not just adding compost I'm adding a little more vermiculite with compost and peat moss just around my planting hole and if you want to you can give it a little bit of fertilizer maybe some organic fertilizer that's made for vegetables about a tablespoon I think I put about a tablespoon in here with this okay and give it a marker and because I was expecting rain I did not water these in okay so just a rule of thumb and what I like to do this might vary a little bit from the book um, I like to plant cucumbers about every two weeks up until the middle of my growing season which is right around the end of July so once I planted some like this I might go ahead and put some more seeds out or I might go ahead and start some more in cups when you are transplanting your cucumbers from the cups what I did here is a little different from the book uh, in the book you should use a paper cup and then not disturb the root system at all because 
cucumbers, as I said, are, have a very sensitive root system. Um, but I was very careful when I removed it from my cup and put it into the soil. If you are using a paper cup, just cut away the bottom of your cup and then place the cup and every paper cup and everything into the soil. And don't use the, obviously the plastic and put it in there. So that's just a little side note. And then one thing I would like to recommend that you do not do is buy the little transplants at the Home Improvement Center that will have about two or three cucumbers started in it and then separate them out and then put them into your soil. Um, I saw a video I think on this on YouTube where someone did that and I was thinking I don't think that's going to work but I always try out things before I do a video on them just to see how they work for me because I don't want to mislead you and if this is an easier way, I certainly wanted to show you, but they did not grow. As a matter of fact, these died. So again, you know, the cucumber does have a sensitive root system. Now, if this works for you, that's great. Um, let me know in the comments below. It just didn't happen to work for me. So i um, not saying that it won't work for everybody, but um, I do like to kind of do a trial first before I make a video on something. So anyway, I would suggest not doing that. And now we need to care for our cucumbers once they start growing. And you can actually let them just grow outside your box onto the pathway, like a mulched area if you want to. And that will work fine. I've done that many times. Um, of course, as I mentioned, you the best way to do it is just let them grow right up a trellis. You'll notice they have little tendrils, these little wiry looking things here. They will grab onto your trellis and if they're not grabbing on, just give them a little bit of help. You know, we should be walking through our garden every day for about 15 minutes and just checking on our plants. So just help your little cucumber plants along by putting that tendril next to the trellis and they will just grab right on. Okay. Also, if you're growing up a trellis, if you notice there are some side shoots coming off of the main cucumber plant, just go ahead and cut those off. This will help with the air circulation around the cucumbers. And I like to keep a rain gauge in my garden so I know how much rain I'm getting. Um, you want to make sure your cucumbers are getting about two inches every week. And if I'm not getting that much, I wanted to go ahead and show you how you can water them. Even those, these really didn't need water because I got rain the next day. But you'll want to make a, maybe a little trench around your cucumber plant um, or a little hole to act kind of like a funnel so that that water goes right down to the roots of the cucumber plant and doesn't run off. A lot of times if your soil is really good and fresh mixed, it won't run off. Now I'd like to share with you some of the problems that I personally have experienced growing cucumbers. And so as I mentioned, you should be walking through your garden every day for about 15 minutes. And you know, you really don't have weeds in a square foot garden or you shouldn't. So it should be a very pleasant time of day to walk through your garden and enjoy your plants. So some of the things that I look for when I'm walking through my garden are insects. Now this one is called a striped cucumber beetle. It is gold and black and these little guys will just feed on your plants and your flowers. And so it, they will greatly reduce um, the production of cucumbers and they will also spread disease from your cucumber plants. So I like to hand collect these if I don't have a really bad problem with them. And you will see them just flying around. So that is not a good bug. Okay, that's a bad bug. This is another bad bug. It's called the spotted squash beetle. Again, I hand collect these. They look a lot like a ladybug, but they are not. Mostly these are um, in the southeastern United States. So a lot of you so a lot of you won't, probably won't have a problem with this particular beetle. Now I do have a video on how to control these particular beetles on my channel. I'll leave a link for you right up here. Of course, there's always the squash bug. I hate these bugs. They are awful. Here are a couple right here. They're actually mating and you can catch them if they're mating, but if they are not and they're just by themselves, they're very hard to catch. They will fly away pretty quick. Um, they are just nasty little bugs. And so here's some that were on my cucumber plant last year. And you can see all of the problems on here. I just, I think I went on vacation. I came back and that's how fast they can just destroy a plant. They like to hide in the dead leaves and they are just terrible. So um, 
I actually ended up pulling this plant out. I think I only got one or two cucumbers off of it, but you can see how bad the infestation was. They were just all over that plant. And they will eat the, you know, they will feed on the leaves and the stems and the actual fruit. So this was one of the cucumbers I got off of there. You see how just terrible it is. Of course, that's no good for eating at that point. And then you don't want to see any of this on your plants either because those are actually the larvae of the spotted squash beetle. And then if you also see any kind of clusters of little dots like this underneath your leaves, make sure you're checking under your leaves. Those are just a little cluster of eggs. And if you see a mature bad bug on your plant, most likely those are the eggs of the bad bug. This is an example from a bean plant where there was a Mexican bean beetle on here. Um, my spotted squash beetle eggs look like this as well and they have the larvae that are also yellow and now the squash the squash bugs their eggs are actually brown. They'll be a little cluster like that, but they'll be brown. And you certainly don't want to see eggs because you have an infestation just waiting to explode in your garden. So remove those if the infestation hasn't gotten too bad and out of hand. Remove those leaves. And then you'll also notice your flowers are probably looking chewed up. That is a sign of insects. And then what I dread and what I've had a really hard time with over the years is downy mildew. It basically will kill the lower leaves of your plant. It, they'll look gold, like have gold dots inside the green leaves. You can take some protection against downy mildew by not watering your leaves and make sure that you're pruning off that excessive growth on the sides if you're growing vertically up a trellis. That way the plant will receive adequate air circulation, which will help it dry out after a rain. And if it's gotten out of control, use a fungicide on it and then try to plant disease resistant varieties if you notice that you've had a problem with downy mildew. It took me years to learn that because maybe the first year or two you have to identify what your problem is and I finally figured out it was downy mildew and so now I'm able to order uh, seeds which are resistant to downy mildew which helps me a lot with my cucumber production. Here is another example of downy mildew on my cucumber plant. I think I only got one cucumber off of that one. And then this one too is generally always at the lower leaves first. And a lot of times I'll just remove those leaves. And um, But if you do that and you have cucumbers exposed, then it's best to go ahead and harvest those cucumbers. You can harvest your cucumbers at really any stage. I like to make sure I have little snippers so that I can get right in there at the cucumber and I don't snip the vine too. So just be careful. I think when I first started growing cucumbers, I may have snipped my actual vine down at the base of the cucumber plant. So make sure that you have some precision snippers so you only cut what you want to cut. And of course you can harvest your cucumbers at any growth stage. Typically, however, you'll want to harvest the pickling cucumbers when they're only about three to five inches long. They can be quite bitter and that's why we like to pickle those. And then of course you have the seedless cucumbers that what we call the Asian or the English and those are great at about 10 to 12 inches. Of course you could harvest these at a very early stage too and pickle those if you wanted to but I like to save those for my salads. And then on the other slicing cucumber is the one I will grow sometimes is the market more and those you usually let those get to about seven maybe eight inches long and then those are just perfect for fresh eating as well. So there you go. Now if you'd like some more ideas about what you can plant and how to plant it in a square foot garden, you can head over to my channel and click the playlist button there and look for how to plant vegetables in a square foot garden and there's a lot of different ones over there. You can check those out. And then while you're checking out the playlist, look for cucumber recipes. There are so many different recipes I've made for you guys over there. You are welcome to check those out too when you're harvesting fresh cucumbers from your garden this summer. Thanks so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day.